and sometimes when the traffic is terrific, uh, none of us can get in. So we have to always be careful that we don't, you know, kind of log out and try to log back in during a show because radio with pictures is increasingly popular, which of course is exactly the way it should be. Okay, let me let me touch on a couple of items before we get into the heart of our conversation. We have a full crew tonight. I will introduce them at the appropriate time. But let me go to news items because something has just happened that I wanted to make note of. In fact, I it happened two or three days ago and I made a note in, a, in, in my notebook to, to make sure I led the news tonight with it. After over a hundred years, the United States has officially recognized the Armenian Genocide. Um, Dr. Richard Spence and I, our resident historian, have talked about this a couple of times uh, during the Ottoman Empire, um, the literal genocide of the Armenians, and the whole turgid story is in that item number one with a lot of background. Turkey, of course, is furious at Biden for even calling it a genocide, but I think this is a harbinger of things to come. Again, more and more is falling the closet. This has been a long time in coming, and I wanted to pay appropriate uh, respect to it. Because remember, I told Rick the first time I'd ever heard of the Armenian Genocide. It was not in school, not in college. It was on an episode of the Star Trek. Gene Roddenberry had put it in the script, and he was um, inundated with gratitude from the Armenian community, I believe there's one in Los Angeles, who were quite astonished at mainstream television, NBC, in 1968, 67, somewhere in that country, had actually made note of this as a historical atrocity that has never been recognized by us until now. And I'm just using that as kind of an indicator. There's a lot more interesting things going on that you'll hear during this program. We're going to talk about a couple of them that may surprise an awful lot of people. And we will put it on the record and we'll see whether this political prediction in fact true. We will see. Um, for those of you who are wondering what I'm talking about, what you want to do is go to the other side of midnight.com, that's our URL. Click on that, and that will take you to our home page. The banner tonight, the very top, says uh, Flying on Mars. Um, what about the atmosphere? It has the entire team listed there. Click on that banner, that will take you to tonight's guest page. Right under the banner there, you will see fast links to items. Ron, Timothy, and Ruggiero is also posted there shortly. Uh, click on my item that takes you just down to uh, scroll links to radio pictures. My item number one was our recognition of the Armenian genocide. Number two, as you may or may not have been aware, NASA succeeded this week twice. Uh, once on Sunday night, I of course stayed up all night. Another entertaining and very intriguing and, and uh, you're watching uh, Mimi uh, Ayum, who is the annuity uh, uh, program manager, you know, kind of go bonkers and feel the kind of fun. You know, I look at all these people, all these incredible blessings, who are, of course, at the cutting edge of civilization. Anything that has benefited most of the people has started out as a cockeyed, hair-brained idea in some nerd's mind, and then through a random walk process of politics, and finance, and perseverance, um, these ideas eventually make their way into society, into civilization, and they benefit so many people. And I'm looking at all this incredible enthusiasm among the Ingenuity team there at JPL. And I cannot square in my own mind the incongruity of their honest, unabashed enthusiasm 
passion and love for what they're doing. What, what mastery of forces of another world over 100 million miles away, they pulled off again with this idea that they work for an agency which has for over half a century been dedicated to lying to the American taxpayer about a whole bunch of stuff. And it's so incongruous, I just cannot wrap my mind, because it's obvious these people know nothing of the political chicanery going on above them, that we used to call the level of the suits. And their expressions of pure joy at making the impossible look almost easy. I mean, come on, flying an autonomous little helicopter on the planet Mars? completely by digital remote control with no control from Earth. It's all done with the programming on board and a processor which is a hundred times faster than anything NASA has ever put into space before. So it can correct the perturbations of the flight at something like 500 times per second. And all of this, the wonders of the digital universe and people like Bill Gates even jobs and, you know, these icons of a world where because of the digitization of everything and the accessibility of everything, the truth, Mr. Mulder, is out there, provided you have the proper filters to get through the screen and the distractions and the outright censorship to find it. So we're going to talk a bit tonight about Mars and the atmosphere flying on Mars and the absence of, of dust. That came up uh, earlier in the week, you know, where was all the dust? Well, I have a dust video to show you. Very, very revealing. Uh, perseverance launching of little ingenuity. The first flight on Mars of a self-propelled, self-controlled, uh, autonomous flight, helicopter flight. Anyway, uh, item number two, if you click on that, that's the actual, all the frame, something like <clears throat> 14, 15 million frames put together, sized by a member of the uh, <clears throat> Reddit Perseverance Citizen Scientist team. It's amazing how a lot of the, you know, fitting together of all the stuff is being done by amateurs and not by NASA. Anyway, this is a full frame version of the Flight of Ingenuity, Flight 1. There's item number 2. Hope you spare time. Take a look. Really, really remarkable. I think this is all being done with literally no control. Time lag, speed of light. How could there be? Item number 3. At the same time that NASA and JPL and the Perseverance Mission were making history flight. They also activated another technological demonstration, which is the so-called MOXIE instrument, which stands for basically making oxygen on Mars. What you do is you use uh, electricity, which comes from the nuclear power source of Percy, and you run it through catalyzers, and you take the atmosphere of Mars, which is overwhelmingly carbon dioxide, and you split it apart, and you get rid of the carbon monoxide, and you're left with oxygen, and apparently this is producing on the order of several 